have a chance to make this presentation. Today I will speak about yes, I do. the overall <laughs> cybersecurity you. development in critical domains in the Republic of Moldova. My name is Aurelian Buzdugan and I'm a PhD student at the Moldova State University. If we talk about critical infrastructures, we know that there is an increased uh, coverage in the media in the last period. Probably everyone has heard about cyber attacks against energy sector, against transportation, healthcare, and so on. So critical infrastructures are basically vital organizations for our society, for the well-functioning of our country, economy, and so on. Also, we can mention that critical infrastructures are also research centers, uh, for example, those that deal with nuclear or radiological materials. Before, cyber, critical infrastructures were designed with a focus on operation and safety. And as the digitalization process has also covered this domain, we have now to deal with a new type of threats, an emergent type of threats, we can say, uh, which uh, are cyber uh, threats. Therefore, these new technologies that help improve the sensor activities, monitoring, control, and in many times they replaced old operational systems or certain parts of a system uh, have, of course, given us a lot of uh, opportunities, but uh, also a lot of uh, challenges. As part of a research done in the PhD project, project, we have proposed to use decision support system, which are type of information systems, in order to be able to uh, perform better risk, cyber risk management in critical infrastructures. And the main reason is because this um, type of risk management involves a large amount of data. Many times data is not always understood by all parties. For example, decision makers need only strategic data, whereas operators need a lot of technical data. And we think that emerging problems require uh, solutions that are offered by also emerging technology. We have created a model to support uh, the concept of the decision support system or the TSS that will help assess the maturity of cybersecurity in the organization. And the main goal of which we created the model was to assess whether uh, the human factor or human dimension is well developed and uh, if investments are required actually in a technical system, such an information system, to improve its capabilities or to better train the people or the users of this uh, system. Uh, we made the model as simple as possible and uh, in order to make it easier for organizations to adopt it, to adapt it to their needs, and we have tried to cover all types of uh, cyber uh, of critical infrastructure. Uh, the model has already been reviewed and confirmed by external reviews from the Institute of Metrology from Moldova, as well as the Slovenia Nuclear Safety Administration. Both results confirm the applicability of the model, as well as that it uh, will achieve the scope that it was proposed for. And moreover, it uh, can also be used to support other type of assessments, for example, internal ISO 27000 review, which are information security management. The model has also been awarded a bronze medal at the Cadet Innova 2021, which is an innovation contest held every year in Romania. Um, the model, as mentioned, is aligned with other uh, standards and partially it can also support other type of assessments. So besides ISO 27000, it can also uh, help, for example, to do evaluations or compliance assessments against NIST. Uh, standards or against recommendations, for example, from nuclear security series from the IAEA when it comes to uh, evaluating the computer security technologies or controls that were implemented. <clears throat> so the model uh, briefly covers four dimensions. These are the ones that we have identified and we thought these are the most critical ones and each dimension has um, is described by certain attributes. So we proposed five levels for the model for evaluating cybersecurity maturity from very high to very low. 
Therefore, each level is described by 16 um, attributes. Here on the screen, you can see, for example, the um, criteria and the attributes that define, uh, that help assess the policy and administration dimension. And on the left, we have organizations that are have a very high cybersecurity maturity. And um, as we go to the right, column by column, the cybersecurity uh, maturity decreases and the risk increases. Uh, So why have we also um, looked at the nuclear and radiological area is because computer security or computers are also used in nuclear facilities, in nuclear uh, research reactors, but also in uh, other type of technologies that might make use of nuclear radiological materials, so, such as, for example, the ones in healthcare. Therefore, the line between information security and nuclear security becomes very thin, and many times we see that Cybersecurity is already embedded in uh, most of uh, of areas or technologies nowadays, especially in the critical infrastructure. So, as part of the analysis that we want to cover today, we did a retroactive application of a model against the cybersecurity development developments that took place in the Republic of Moldova. So, we started our analysis from 2015, where we had um, one law on nuclear security where we had only one mentioning of IT security as an interesting part of nuclear and radiological physical security, so basically the systems that ensure the physical security for such uh, objectives. Uh, therefore, um, you can see uh, on a small graph how we evaluated um, the maturity back then. So we, we see something in the policy administration, and of course, if it's there, that means there's a level of awareness. Both policy administration can uh, Im impose or can help education and evaluation dimension to increase, but also it would not become part of a policy, of course, there would not be any awareness. The next um, assessment is for year 2020, where, we, where there was a new law on the cybersecurity program. This one was developed for, let's say, future looking for four years. And already it started looking more at capacity building. It was looking both at technology and human resources aspect. And of course, training and ability to, risk, to identify, to respond to a cyber attack, implement security control, also right attack. Therefore, we believe that overall cybersecurity has a, I would not say best, but has a good solid foundation in terms of policy. So the program is future looking. Uh, it improves a lot the education, it focuses a lot on the human factor, which uh, also would directly lead to a better risk management. Of course, a problem of resources on how to implement many times this law is another topic that is outside the scope of this presentation. Next, we have a new minimum security requirements in 2017, which basically further improve the dimension for policy administration as well as education and evaluation. So. As the name suggests, it's basically an attempt to set minimum security requirements across all public sectors, which in Republic of Moldova directly affect nuclear and radiological uh, operators, because many times these are state-owned. So, uh, of course, such a document has the risk that it can easily become outdated. However, on the other side, it helps create a baseline across all public sectors, so then it's also easier to assess, both internally by the organization and by external parties, uh, gives clarity on what has to be implemented and, and helps both operators but also senior management understand the importance of the topic. Further uh, on, we looked at the information security strategy, which was adopted and promulgated in 2019. It's basically already is um, a, a solid baseline on information security across all type of dimensions. Of course, it's always accompanied, accompanied by an action plan, which also included um, the interest of states to protect critical infrastructures. Therefore, we see that um, with such a strategy, as well as the developments, we can say that all dimensions are in green. Of course, some are in that lighter green, where we think that it still requires improvement. For example, work environment, which it's basically the ability and the chance given to the employee to 
develop in terms of skills to be able to raise risk, to be able to propose solutions as many times. It's not about the knowledge at the operator le level, but it's many times about the ability to speak out and to express certain uh, issues that might occur in the workplace. In conclusion, so we would like to mention that um, both the external reviews as well as the re retroactive review of a model uh, prove it's multidimensional. It can be used for various scopes to both assess whether a specific decision support system uh, requires in addition let's say better training for the users or maybe the system needs to be refined but also for example as we have seen it uh, helps to do assessments on cybersecurity maturity of course a model can also be used for self-assessments for example each organization can use it and that is why uh, we, uh, we we work hard to make it as simple as possible and not to make it as comprehensive so it's always easy to build upon uh, its, this, this structure uh, we did a similar analysis all in the healthcare sector in Moldova, and we can say that the model more or less shows the same area, of course, um, as that area didn't have a lot of, let's say, attention as in the past few years when it came to cyber attack. Probably the developments were not that um, obvious. However, uh, in the past years, we see a lot of focus on the healthcare systems, on medical system, on resilience, and so on. So again, in, in conclusion, I'd like to mention that cybersecurity is always a process. It's never a checkbox that if there's a policy or a strategy approved, that fixes it all. No, it's always a process to develop, to raise each dimension. And we have also seen, for example, that you cannot get to a, uh, a maturity level or work environment or cyber risk management if you don't have adequate policies in place, if you don't have a, an awareness level and so on. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for for attention and if you have any question please please let me know uh, may i <clears throat> yes please well uh thank you for your very interesting um report. Uh, for the very beginning, uh, I would like to mention that uh, I'm quite far from this area, uh, but um, uh, I would I will have a few uh, trivial questions. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, you, you are uh, building uh, these uh, systems uh, and in a certain uh, programming language environment. Uh, can you tell us uh, what which tools are you using for <clears throat> building up such systems? So for um, for the decision support system itself, which is an information system, uh, we didn't program itself. We just built the concept, and the main reason is because uh, let's say code becomes very easily outdated. So if we build something now and we want to publish it and so on. And by the time, let's say, it, it's public and it's presented, it already needs to be updated to cover new vulnerabilities in the code and so on. So we wanted to make it as a concept. And we focused a lot on the elements that have to be considered in the critical infrastructures because these are many times different than traditional IT systems. So for example, in critical infrastructure, there's a lot of focus on resilience, so how the system operates when there's some errors. And many times it, it also comes, for example, for uh, a focus on safety. So what happens, for example, if a medical device that is hacked compared to a computer system? So we'll say if a home computer or a computer in a small office is being hacked, probably there's no safety impact. But if when, let's say, it's a medical device impacted or there's some, let's say, even energy sector, uh, any type of critical infrastructure, there can be a safety. So we build a lot on the concept and what, let's say, criteria that have to be taken into account. The model is also theoretical. However, we built a small code in um, in Python to basically help the assessment process. So uh, as you saw on one slide, the policy administration, basically the table is the theoretical part, and we just build a small program to help go through each step. So basically, each question will be asked to the operator and would need to answer from one to five what is the level from very low to, to very high. So that one was, was built in, in, in Python. I got it. 
And one maybe uh, additional uh, naive question. Um, as I said, I'm not very familiar, but uh, just using simple logic uh, and using some extrapolation for uh, DevOps uh, field uh, in um, elaborating different types of, of uh, software, uh, there uh, is a quite a specific uh, stage uh, concerning uh, data drift. How do you address, how do you imagine to address this data drift or data drift similar uh, aspects uh, concerning uh, cybersecurity system you are working on? Thank you very much. That's indeed a, it's a very uh, good and challenging question. So um, we did not, let's say, evaluate at this moment uh, some, something like data driven system. However, in when it comes to um uh, cyber security there is a lot of of data to be considered so for example if we look we can take a small example let's say a medical device so is that medical device connected to a computer where there is let's say a browser is that computer part of an out of the network let's say in, in the clinic or, or hospital so when we need to address let's say a cyber risk and if we talk about the critical infrastructure, in this case, healthcare, then we can see that all these nodes have to be taken into account. And there is a lot of information on each one on, of, about vulnerabilities. So a vulnerability in a, let's say, office computer, let's say in HR or accountant office, can also be a risk in the end to a medical device if this is not properly um, uh, separated. So basically, Yes, it has to also be data driven because there's no other way. I mean, you need to understand what data you're going to analyze. And in this case, it's it's a lot because in the critical infrastructure, it can be even more. So, for example, if we talk about energy sector, so we can talk about one the electric grid being under attack. But then we also have to see that this is often uh without boundaries so for example if another electric grid from another country say romania or ukraine or we where we can also import energy is affected can this affect us so many times it it, it goes let's say a few levels higher to understand all the amount of data that, that is necessary for uh, for this um devops yes of course it can be used especially when it comes to the development of a code for uh, this decision support system is devops uh, nowadays, can many times the new concept is DevSecOps, where uh, security is also included in in part of let's say this process to to develop something or develop the, the product in this case. So of course, as part of a development process and as part of let's say testing, using the system, reviewing, and so on, uh, definitely it's a standard, and we we always supported the use of standards even in. Uh, uh, when it comes to a DSS, because it's many times to reuse what was already done, tested, and everyone they came with a good practice rather than starting from 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 scratch from the beginning. Hey, thank you for your comprehensive uh, elaboration on this aspect. Thank you. Thank you very much.